Hi, my name is David Cheeseman. I'm going to be demonstrating a universal plug and play based covert channel where devices are cloned and the payloads are embedded in the images in the from the icon list of the device specification. So right here to start off with, I've got my Roku, uh, which is a living room Roku. I'll screenshot that for the video. And in that top left is the icon that we're going to be using. Um, if I look at the device information, I have an IP address that ends in 208, which I will screenshot as well. First, we'll start up the C2 server and then the uh, subordinate server, which is running on a virtual machine on my Proxmox cluster. This is my Kali uh, laptop. Uh, while those are searching for devices, cloning them and starting their agent search, uh, we can look at the device specification or the specification for a universal plug and play. The M search uh, function is sent over SSDP and finds devices. So your phone sends one of these out to find Roku devices. This ST tag uh, basically specifies what kind of information it wants. So SSDP all requests all services and devices, whereas universal plug and play root device just requests the root device and no services. And of course you can search for specific services uh, with different ST values. This is what comes back from the Roku with one of its service calls in the location field. And this gives specification about the Roku. Right here in the icon list, this is what we're most interested in. It has a 360 by 219 uh, dimension image, which is, this is the one from the Roku right now. And then my C2 server has found and cloned the device. And this is the C2 server's version of that same file. Embedded in this with a modified version of secret pixel is the RSA public key that it wants all subordinate servers to use to encrypt payloads to it. So the subordinate server has already found the C2 server, so we can send a message hello. And now the C2 server has found the subordinate server and has received the message hello. We can then do some uh, commands. So real quick, I do not have a file called Etsy password over here yet, but we're gonna grab one. And this supports multiple subordinate servers. And then we'll go on ahead and get a reverse shell started, go to my reverse shell cheat sheet and issue a command for it to run. Now the devices are polling with uh, discover requests, mainly to keep the net flow looking re relatively the same. I thought about just uh, pulling the icon of the devices, but that would look a little bit weird. You'd see an SSDP request and then some device on the network continually retrieving uh, the icon from other devices. So to keep the net flow relatively similar, I'm making SSDP requests right now every 10 seconds, but in an actual deployment, you'd probably do every six, 30 or 60. and then pulling the icons much like the phone would do. Which, speaking of, the IP address of this phone is now, or this Roku device is now ending in 169. I'll screenshot that. But because these devices are acting as pass-throughs, the Roku remains functional. Over here, we have that the Etsy password was retrieved um, and sent, so that is queued up. Uh, for receipt by the C2 server once it uh, pulls the device. The reverse shell command was run, so we can say host name, PVE Cali, who am I? Nubius. Now we just wanna wait and see if it, or wait for it to get the uh, Etsy password file. There we go, we got the message saying that the password file was received and we can see that we have the file from the other machine. So this was a fun covert channel to implement, but it would probably not be very practical. It'd be very easily detected uh, on a network by a passive warden by either seeing um, clone devices show up that uh, mimic one that's maybe in an asset inventory. So I know I have a Roku at this IP. Why do I have Roku's at these other IPs? And additionally, there 
acting as pass-throughs. So devices are contacting it, and then those exact same requests are going out to the real Roku device. And that would also maybe raise red flags. Um, but most important thing too, is that it doesn't cause a denial of service. And uh, we the cool thing was that I managed to do this without affecting uh, the device's functionality. Thank you for your time.